Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Um, as you can see, some progress has been made on the B17. I've now added um, all the glazing. But um, <clears throat> I wanted to tell you some of the problems that I encountered with that and hopefully can just let you know so that you can avoid it should you want to build this kit yourselves. So the first thing is um, these uh, windows here. Now you have a choice of two variants. You have a, a blister type which bulges out or you have these which basically fit flush with the fuselage. Now the problem is that the plastic for the glazing is angled and really the way to fit these is before you close the fuselage up um, because they're angled so you push them from the inside flush against the um, opening there. So of course I had a problem because I'd already closed the fuselage up. Um, <clears throat> I was having a problem putting them in and for them to stay sat there whilst I applied the glue. After a few attempts what I realised was if I put some Tamiya masking tape across the, the glazed area I could then push it in and the tape would prevent it from going too far and then I applied the glue. That's still not 100% flush and I'm hoping that the glue has um, gone around the perimeter enough to secure it into, the, into that hole because the masks I've got are for a B17F and I think it was Ben um, who pointed out <clears throat> that this was an early B17 and it was only then that I realised that this is either um, a D or an E and I don't think you can get masks for a, a D or an E flying fortress so I'm having to use the, uh, the F ones that I've got but they don't have masks for this type of window. So that's the first um, little niggle. The second one is uh, on the main canopy for the cockpit. Now these rear seats, because they come straight up and this canopy is angled, the, the corner of the seat actually pushes the, against the, um, the canopy. So what you have to do is basically keep this pressed down whilst the glue is setting. Um, or you can try and shave a bit off the, um, the seat just there. The next thing is this bubble <clears throat> that goes over the top. There is actually a hole in the canopy, so you've got two locating pins, one here and one there. The hole for this one is too small. So if you fit the canopy, you've then got to um, resize the hole with the drill bit. Well, of course, that means you're going to get swarf inside your um, cockpit. So you've got two choices. Drill the hole first before you put the canopy on. Um, make sure that fits in it. Or what I did, because the canopy was already on, was um, I just uh, cut off that um, locating pin. Um, so I've still got this one at the back. And then put that on there and then I use some Tamiya extra thing to, to seal that in there. The last one I want to show you, and I'll just turn the, the build around a bit, is the nose. Now, this glazed bit has um, a lip going around it, and what the lip is supposed to do is, do is basically go on the inside of the fuselage, and that's how you lo locate the glazing into the fuselage. The only problem is, the bombardier floor um, comes right in line with this the end of the fuselage and where the glazing meets the floor it basically means that because of the lip it won't fit flush with the fuselage well that's the problem i had anyway so the first thing i tried to do was cut little notches either side of the floor so that the lip would fit inside but that didn't work because the other problem you got, the distance of the floor from the bottom of the fuselage means that the lip on this um, glazing won't fit in either. So eventually I realised what I needed to do was 
um, shave the lip off from halfway there all the way along the bottom to halfway the other side leaving you this top half so you could still locate the glazing into the fuselage and give you some anchorage as to where it should go but then you you hadn't got anything um, obstructing the fit on the bottom part and then you just adjusted the bottom part to fit with the line of the fuselage so those are the problems I had with the with the glazing as I say I'm hoping that this rear section here won't for it won't get pushed in when I'm trying to either mask it or do something else with it and that both sides are now secured the next stage is to put the masks on um, and then I can uh, think about uh, applying the undercoat ready for the uh, ready for painting it so I hope you found that useful anybody who's um, interested in building this kit um, and uh, thanks guys for your patience and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.